All right, and it looks like we are live here today. Hello, everyone. My name is Junior, and I like to welcome everybody back to the Daily Digital Show. Uh, this is the one show that keeps you all well informed of what's going on in our digital technological world here. And today looks to be August 3rd, Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. And we've got a couple of stories to go over here today. It's also Wednesday, so we've got the word of the week. I usually throw them on Mondays, but I want to switch it up to Wednesday just because the two W's sound good together. Hey, it's my show. I do what I kind of want to do. Um, so the four things that are outside of the word of the week that I want to kind of touch on here with you guys today. The first one being a company called Unstoppable Domains have just became a unicorn. We'll touch on what that means. The next one being about NFTs and how one jewelry company is actually taking that a step further. The next one being how the Board Ape Yacht Club has officially gone mainstream. And then the last one being, if you've been looking to move anytime here in the next couple of days, weeks, months, or anything like that, and you're really big into tech, these might be a couple of cities in which you would want to be moving to. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break and then we'll jump right into the show. All right, so we're back here. And as I mentioned, the first thing on the block here is going to be unstoppable domains. So if you haven't heard of unstoppable domains, then this may be new news to you. But if you're into cryptocurrency and stuff like that, you probably heard of what a public key or a secret key address is. And what you can actually do with those public keys is actually turn them into an actual real domain, a real URL, so that you don't have to remember it. So for example, if your name is Tom, Dick, and Harry, and you wanted the, you know, your public key address to be something uh, that you can memorize easier instead of the 16, 18, 20 digit. I forget how many numbers actually have for those public keys. Um, you wanted something that you can be more memorable. Then you would actually go to Unstoppable Domain and actually get a domain name that is crypto friendly. So from there, you can go ahead and purchase Tom, Dick and Harry dot Bitcoin or something like that. And then you can actually send all of your wallet information over to that address. And then when someone wants to pay you, you can actually say, hey, go to my um, actual website and then you can pay me through there. So that way you don't have to carry around a public key or anything like that. Currently, Unstoppable Domains is one of the largest companies that have been providing these different domains for the people. And they just were able to close in on a $65 million Series A funding round which actually valued their company at $1 billion. So since they are a now $1 billion company, they have become a, what they call a unicorn. So I, every company pretty much, uh, not just crypto companies or anything like that, like Facebook, uh, Tesla, Apple, and stuff like that, they're billion dollar companies. They are considered to be unicorns. And uh, I just want to kind of scroll down here. Uh, yeah, so you can actually register different what they call top level domains. Uh, I think I mentioned to you guys in a previous episode top level domains about like .xyz and .io and stuff like that. But now with these, you can actually do .crypto, .coin, .bitcoin, .x, .888, .nft, and .dao. Uh, and I believe they also have .wallet also. Yeah, .wallet as well. And for right now, I mean, it looks like they have, since they um, secured that funding and everything, it looks like they're really trying to boost things up. Uh, main reason they're really trying to do that is because they're having some discrepancy as far as how their domains work and they're trying to get those now trademarked. So now you'll be able to actually trademark your actual domain name. But for whatever reason, they're getting a lot of backlash and pushback on that. So um, they're, they're working on that here. Uh, as you can see here, Web3 domain names are here to stay. They definitely are. So currently, the first week of July, July alone, they uh, were able to secure 108,000 ENS domains. ENS just stands for uh, Ethereum Naming Service or Server, one of the two. Um, and those were uh, registered, indicating a 216% increase from the uh, previous month while generating $684,000 in sales. Um and then this is mainly one reason because 000.eth was actually bought. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, I would definitely say if you haven't heard of Unstoppable Domains, I got another uh, link here. And I wanted to just, there was something on here that I had to mention. 
Um, yeah, to be honest, I forget why. Uh, but I'll go ahead and drop this link here onto the uh, description for this video as well. So that way you guys can kind of check it out, read through it as well. Uh, it just really talks about, oh yeah, this one really just talks about how they are going through that um, uh, that battle with the trademark. So Unstoppable has failed in most of its attempts to register top level domains as trademarks. So currently they're still working on that. Uh, that's I think that's why I want to bring up this. Um, yeah, this is Ethereum name service. That's what it's called. I think that's why I want to bring up this article for you guys here. Um, so yeah, so again, if you haven't heard of Unstoppable Domains and you've been looking for a way to make your uh, your wallet addresses is a lot easier to remember, then one thing you can do is go ahead and go to Unstoppable Domains. And there's a process to it, guys. Don't just think you're going to go up there like you're going to GoDaddy or Shopify or you know Wix or Weebly and stuff like that. You type in a couple of uh, names and you, you, know, you get a domain name. There's actually a different process that you have to take for that. Uh, sometimes there's different uh, stuff you have to download because we're di we're dealing with a Web3 world, not a Web2 world, and things are just a little bit different, especially just now starting off. Um, Unstoppable Domains is actually at the forefront of making it a little bit easier for us because, again, remember, we have to remember all of our different public key addresses and stuff like that, and they were, you know, this long of numbers and letters and stuff like that. Now they're trying to take that away from the Web3 aspect and bring it back into Web2, which we're used to by just doing it as, you know, actual names and stuff like that. Um, so that it makes our life a little bit easier. So definitely go ahead and check that out if you haven't done so already and thought about, you know, getting your own, you know, personal um, domain address as far as like cryptocurrency and stuff like that goes and NFTs at that for that matter as well. I would definitely say, Go and check out Unstoppable Domains. There's another company out there that's really big. I forget the actual name of it. I do apologize for that. But uh, once you Google Unstoppable Domains and then, you know, other stuff, other ads and stuff like that for other companies will also pop up. All right. So the next one here. So what I was doing a couple of days ago, I was on this website called NFT Evening. I get a lot of information from there. They're a really good source of uh, information. And they have the upcoming NFTs for the 1st through the 7th of August. Well, one of the ones that are coming up is the Journey NFT. I was like, okay, cool. They got the Fellas NFT. All right, that's cool. And then I got to this one here. Tiffany and Co. forward slash CryptoPunks uh, hyphen NFTIF. And I saw that and almost lost my mind. Reason being is because Tiffany and Co. is a major, major company. CryptoPunks is probably one of the most well-known NFT uh, art collection in the entire NFT space and now they are collabing together. I literally never saw this coming and I'm actually surprised to uh, to see this collaboration. But as you can see here, it's, I mean, it's right up their alley. Um, Tiffany is a major, major, major jewelry company. I'm not sure if they're US based or whatever, but in the US they are a big company. They even like trademark or copy wrote their own blue color that they use all the time and now they are doing a partnership with these nfts and to provide them with their own piece of jewelry uh, this right here is 30 ETH. so if you don't know what 30 ETH is it's about fifty thousand yeah fifty thousand dollars right there so at 30 ETH, these each one of these are valued and the beautiful thing about this and i mean it all depends on who you are and stuff like that but they are actually building a community around these NFTs. So these are only for people who currently own the CryptoPunks NFT. Uh, I actually went to the actual website where they talk about this when they revealed it uh, August 1st. Um, so actually they revealed it July 31st and it's supposed to be dropping sometime here this week. Um, but yeah, so there's a total of 250 of the NFTs in the collection. Um, from Tiffany and Co. themselves, we're taking NFTs to the next level. Exclusive to CryptoPunk holders, NFTIF transformed your NFT into a bespoke pendant handcrafted by Tiffany and Co. artisans. You'll also receive an additional NFT version of that actual pendant. So basically, after you go ahead and mint your um, basically your pass, your digital pass on the blockchain. They will send you out a code for you to basically redeem your actual uh, NFT, your your CryptoPunk or whatever. 
Now, even though I don't believe, you know, just because you own an NFT, CryptoPunk, um, you may not have, you know, that much, I guess, ETH laying around or whatever. Um, 30 ETH is actually quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you do and you own one of these CryptoPunks, I, I would definitely recommend you going ahead and checking these out. These are actually uh, going ahead or going to be pretty amazing in my opinion. Uh, looks like the Twitter community has really jumped on it here as well. Uh, lots of people hate Tiffany and think they're overpriced, but there's cl uh, clearly a market for them, and this suits that market. Um, I myself, I've never really looked into uh, Tiffany and to determine whether they're overpriced or not. But uh, if you have and you, again, own one of these NFTs, uh, definitely check them out and look at them. Uh, to be sure, Tiffany & Co. first experimented with punk-inspired jewelry in April. At the time, the brand's vice president, Alexander uh, Arnault, flaunted a rose gold and enamel pendant based on his crypto punk 3167. So as you can see here, guys, a lot of these companies are now really jumping into the Web3 space, digital space, NFT space, and stuff like that. Um, and it's going to really just ex keep on exploding from there. This is definitely the new wave. It's not going anywhere. People thought that the crypto winter was going to basically destroy the whole ecosystem as far as like NFTs and stuff like that go. Um, it's, I mean, it's a market. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Uh, but they are no, they are not going anywhere, I would say. All right. And for the next thing is going to be the word of the week. And the word of the week is going to be fintech. Uh, you probably can kind of guess what fintech is. Fin just stands for finance. Tech just stands for technology. And a simple definition of that is a uh, any company or business that uses technology to modify, enhance, or automate financial services for businesses or consumers. Some examples including mobile banking, peer-to-peer -peer payment services such as Venmo and Cash App, automated portfolio managers such as Wealthfront and Betterment, or trading platforms such as Robinhood. It can also apply to the development and trading of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and Ether. Um, how exactly does it work? Um, uh, Fintech simplifies financial transactions for consumers, for businesses, making them more accessible and generally more affordable. It can also apply the companies and services utilizing AI, big data, and encrypted blockchain technology to facilitate uh, highly secure transactions amongst an internal network. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of trends for 2022. Digital banking continues to grow. Digital banking is easier to access than ever before. Many consumers already manage their money, request and pay loans, and purchase insurance through digital first banks. This simplicity and convenience will likely drive additional growth in this sector with the global digital banking platform market expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 11.5% by 2026. Uh, blockchain, te blockchain technology allows for decentralized transactions without a government entity, which is a really big thing there, or a third-party organization being involved. That's definitely a big trend for 2022 as well. And also AI, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Uh, those technologies have changed how fintech companies scale, redefining these services they offer to clients. So again, you don't have to actually, I think I mentioned this to you guys before, you don't actually have to have a human being be there anymore answering questions you can have an ai or uh, a learning machine basically do all of that for you uh, they've got a top reasons consumers use fintech uh, different types of fintech uh, definitely check out this article here this comes from the columbia university they did a whole uh, i guess boot camp on this here they've got a lot of information that i'm i'm actually not going to go through all of it as well uh, but i do have another article here that I want to jump on and this is uh this I just wanted to show the examples of fintech so one example is digital lending and credit uh, one company called cabbage directly lends small business loans and is powered by transactional data to help make incredibly quick lending decisions uh, they also have mobile banking with consumers looking more towards financial wellness Many, many financial institutions are adopting or expanding their mobile banking capabilities with the rise, rising demand for digital banking among consumers. Um, also with mobile banking, they have mobile payments. Ask anybody under 30 how they prefer to pay and they'll more than likely tell you mobile apps. Um, 
uh, are the way to go as we move from a cash-based society to an increasingly digital one. Again, everything's going digital. Peer-to-peer -peer peer -peer services such as Venmo have arisen to replace traditional payment methods. In fact, it's estimated that in 2018 alone, mobile point-of-sale transactions will top 5.4 billion worldwide. When was this article? They're talking about 2018. We should already have that information. Um, so I'm assuming, yeah, this, this article may have came, or come out in 2018 or something like that. I'm not sure exactly when it came out, but... Uh, cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain cryptocurrency exchanges have been able to connect users buying or selling cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin blockchain solutions have aimed to reduce fraud or by keeping provenance data on the blockchain uh, they've also got insurance ins insure tech now they got insure tech <laughs> insure tech is the use of technology designed to maximize savings and gain efficiency from the insurance industry models <laughs> Um, insure techs are redefining the insurance customer experience by innovating lengthy processes, including underwriting claims, processing and immediate activation. That's actually going to be nice. Um, that and like real estate mortgages and stuff like that. If you can just like automate that and make that shorter, I mean, gosh, um, trading, trading and investing has improved with the adoption of fintech. Uh, information from big data is big data is often unstructured and unreadable without the help of AI technologies. Um, banking as a service, which is BAAS, um, I guess it's similar to SaaS. We got BAS. Um, through BAS or white label banking, fintechs are able to offer a financial institution products and services under the fintechs on brand. The fintech pays a fee to a financial institution to access their BAS platform, banking license, regulatory expertise, and services associated with lending, payments, mobile bank accounts, deb debit cards, fraud management, and more. Um, so yeah, so if you guys have not heard about fintech before, um, this may be something that you are already in tune with. Like I said, uh, Robinhood, if you've heard of that, um, they do like investing and stuff like that. If you've heard of pretty much any like Apple Pay, Google Pay, all that stuff, you know, you can just tap your phone and just pay like that. You've dealt with fintech before. You just haven't actually knew what exactly it was. All right. And so the next thing here on the block is going to be with Gucci. Gucci, not Gucci Mane, but Gucci, the fashion house company is actually now accepting not only Bitcoin, not only Ethereum, but ApeCoin. The ApeCoin, which is from Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, they are now going to start accepting that. As I mentioned before, with Tiffany and Cole and the CryptoPunks, Board Ape Yacht Club is now becoming more of a community, a community of people who really believe in the dream of what they are essentially providing for them. Uh, as we mentioned before about NFTs, NFTs are really all about the utility of what's behind them. What do they provide? And with the uh, Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs, you actually get um, access to their, I believe like Clubhouse in Florida. You actually get access to their, um, geez, what is it called? Their metaverse that they're creating. I did an episode on that as well. And you actually get, you know, some ape coin, which is their own, I guess, community coin that they use. And now these community coins can actually be used for other purposes, which one of these purposes is to buy clothes. Uh, so after you buy clothes and then maybe you can buy food with ape coin, that's really all that you really need. Uh, you can use ape coin to um, or I'm not saying you can do it now, but essentially you'll be able to use ape coin to um, purchase housing or to pay for rent or something like that. Um, now, once you got housing, you got a roof over your head. Once you have clothing on your body, once you got food in your belly, you're pretty much good to go. And ApeCoin is looking to be one of those major players in that scene with Gucci now taking them on. Uh, as you can see here, this tweet, or there was a tweet that came from Gucci itself that confirmed the news to its 6.8 million followers. Gucci said that now accepting ApeCoin payments via BitPay. Uh, BitPay is just a crypto payment processing service, whatever you call it. Uh, select Gucci boutiques inside of the USA. Expand to range its cryptocurrencies available in store purchases. Yet another step in the house's exploration of Web3. So as you can see again, all of these major brands, all of these big companies are adopting Web3 
they are adopting blockchain technology uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, Gucci has been working hard to adopt the Web3 world. In recent months, they have been working on a metaverse space inside of Roblox, a deal with Super Rare and its own NFT collection. So Gucci is not shying away from all of this Web3 technology and stuff. They're actually embracing it full force. Um, ApeCoin is definitely growing in popularity. A lot of people are starting to purchase it again, even though it's crypto winter. I mean, it's, it's, it's cryptocurrency. <laughs> Everybody is trying to jump on this new wave of the future. Before, we used to have gold and silver until, you know, the paper dollar came out and coins uh, made out of like nickel and what they call copper or whatever. Uh, and then now from paper money, we're um, switching over to now digital money. And these digital currencies and stuff like that is definitely a new wave of the future. Um so yeah, I'm really curious to know what you guys think about that as well. Uh, I myself don't own a piece of Gucci or anything like that. Uh, I don't even own ApeCoin at the moment, but I have actually been thinking about getting some ApeCoin, uh, not for you know purchasing any Gucci products or anything like that, but because I, I believe in the technology, I believe in that space, uh, and I believe ApeCoin will actually will actually boost things up in, in, I don't say the economy, but boost things up in the world a little bit more than you know what this paper dollar is. I've had a... Uh, episode before where I mentioned about how the US dollar and the euro are now basically hand to hand. Uh, now there aren't, I think, I think for every one euro, it's like one dollar and a quarter or something like that now. So it's, it's trending back up a little bit. Uh, nothing to where it was before about a year ago. But um, as the power of the dollar actually goes down, it uh, looks like the cryptocurrency power is actually increasing. Uh, Bitcoin is definitely going to be on the forefront of it. But I mean, you never know. Bitcoin might actually get trumped over by other coins, maybe ApeCoin being one. Uh, and again, it's all about the utility. It's all about how can I use this to my purpose, to my benefit, especially in coming times. Will I be able to buy gas with it, uh, even though gas is like, you know, $10 a gallon or something like that in some places. All right. All right. So and then the last thing here today is I was just doing a little bit of research and I came across a company, I think it was like Cypress or something like that. And they were saying like they are the next like tech hub of the world or something. Um, and I was kind of curious, was like, hey, what other tech hubs or tech cities are out there? Silicon Valley being one of the major players. Um, I did hear that in, it's in Texas, either Austin, I think it's Austin to be honest, Austin, Dallas, or Houston. I don't think it's Houston, either Austin or Dallas. Those were the next like rising tech places uh, for engineers and um, scientists and stuff like that to go move to and work. They really have a lot of companies out there that's boosting uh, their city up. But as I was doing some research, I actually kind of found a bunch of other companies or a bunch of other cities that are bringing in lots of companies and they are major tech companies as well. And they are considering them or these different cities the newest tech hub uh, of the United States, at least the world. I was still doing some research of that. There's a lot of cities out there, uh, but I did want to share with you guys the one of the United States. And um, so, yeah, so this is an article here cities with the fastest growing high tech sectors. I believe this first article, they kind of split it up into different pages. I don't like when they do that without giving like a list breakdown bulletin of each one. So I'm going to like breeze through this real quick. I think between two and six, it's technically only like four or five pages, but I'm just going to breeze through. So California, of course, we know is going to be a place. San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward, Hayward, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. This made the list number 24. Trenton, New Jersey. We've got Denver, Aurora, Lakewood, Colorado. We've got Boston, Cambridge, Newton, um, Massachusetts there. I'm going to jump over, skip page three. Well, I mean, well, we'll go through them all. Yes, why not? Uh, Boulder, Colorado, Madison, Wisconsin, California, Lexington Park, Maryland, Charleston, North Charleston, South Carolina, Tulsa, Oklahoma, page four, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Franklin, Davidson, uh, Phoenix, Mesa, Scottsdale, Arizona, Colorado Springs, Col Colorado, Orlando, Kissimmee, Sanford, Florida, uh, Portland, South Portland, Maine. I think M is M E Maine. I don't even know what state that is. 
Uh, page five here, almost done. Uh, San Jose, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, uh, California, Ogden, Clearfield, Utah, uh, Durham, and Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Salt Lake City, Utah, Huntsville, Alabama, and then lastly here for the top five is going to be Greeley, Colorado, Austin, Round Rock, Texas, so Austin, yeah, um, Crestview, Fort Walton Beach, and Destin, Florida is number three, Palm Bay, Melbourne, Tit Titusville, Florida is number two, and then lastly, number one is going to be Bend, Redmond, Oregon. This one right here really threw me for a surprise. I don't even know how Oregon <laughs> made the list for tech companies, but I've never been to Oregon. Maybe there is a lot of uh, companies out there for whatever reason. Um, I just I can't think of anything that's really in Oregon. Um, but yeah, then I got a, another website here to kind of give a briefer list, um, and they actually give it in a list format, so I can just kind of show you guys this here. Atlanta GE? Atlanta... So I think somebody totally messed this up. GE is not how you abbreviate Georgia. It's GA. Atlanta, Georgia, Austin, Texas, Baltimore, Maryland, Boston, Massachusetts, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Denver, Colorado, Los Angeles, California, New York City, New York, Phoenix, Arizona, Raleigh, North Carolina, San Francisco, California, San Jose, California, Seattle, Washington, and then Washington, D.C. Um, so these are really just every major city. That's like a major city, honestly. I like the other list better because they do give a wide variety, even like cities I've never even heard of. Um, but these ones are just hey, like, hey, like, you know, come out here to our major city and stuff like that. Uh, but this one does give a, in my opinion, a bit of a better breakdown uh, of the different technology companies in, like for example, this is Atlanta. Um, here we go here. Notable FinTech and blockchain establishments based in Atlanta include Cabbage. Cabbage is one that we just talked about for the word of the week. It's a fintech. Uh, lifestyle and cost of living, they give you that. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say check out these two uh, links here that I provide in, of course, the description. And for sure, uh, if you're moving or plan on moving or want to get more into tech, don't know how to get started. These may be like cities uh, that house, you know, people who are really big into it that you may want to look into. Um, that was my really my whole purpose of, you know, kind of just sharing that with you guys just so that you know what you are aware of what is out there and uh, what is in store. Um, all right, so that is about it. That is the end of this episode. Um, definitely tap in with me on all my social media channels. Let me know inside of the comments what you guys think about all this information, especially about how Gucci is now bringing in Board Ape Yacht Club as one of their ways of accepting payment. Uh, Tiffany and company, again, these are two major companies that are really diving into the Web3 world uh, with NFTs, with Metaverse, with cryptocurrency and stuff like that. And again, as I mentioned, everything is really just going digital. Um, and if you have more questions as far as like, hey, how do I get started with my own um, .eth or .x or .crypto, you know, uh, domain names for my cryptocurrency and stuff like that to make my life a lot easier as far as accepting like... Um, uh, payments in cryptocurrency utilizing my web address or not web just utilizing my public key access as a web address uh, I am more than happy to discuss that with a, anybody out there um, and yeah if nothing else I don't think there's nothing else so I appreciate your guys time um, definitely like I said check the links inside the description uh, do some more research on a lot of this stuff and then until next time next tomorrow see you all later